So for today, we're going to be looking at Fallen Sunstar. This is the new exotic that the Warlocks ended up getting, and it's really fun. Not only that, it looks fucking wild. So again, if you guys haven't seen this type of format, we'll be looking at what the exotic actually does. I'll be giving you my build and whatnot, and then we'll be looking at the fashion. Very simplistic way of actually explaining it, but it's pretty much how it'd be. So if you guys like the video, like, comment, subscribe. It really does help the channel grow because a huge portion of people are actually not subscribed. So if you can do me a favor, sub if you like the content, if you like me, and if you don't like me, like after like a month or even after this video, then you can just subscribe and tell me I'm a douchebag. So yeah, pretty much that's it. Let's get into the video. So the Falling Sun Star, let's actually look at what it does and then I'll explain in depth why I actually like this exotic. So Ionic Conductor, Ionic traces you create move faster and grants you additional ability energy. Nearby allies also gain ability energy when you collect an Ionic Trace. So on paper, this seems kind of boring, but man, let me tell you the amount of fun I had with this build, uh, specifically because Ionic Traces you create move faster and grant you additional ability energy. So if you guys don't know, Ionic Traces already give you ability energy, this just doubles it. And what's really, really wild is the new fusion rifle that came out this season gives you ionic traces as well. And if you have a certain build on it, which we will go through what I'm going through, what I, what I have the build for, then you can even get more ionic traces. So just think of just throwing your grenade, your melee all the time, and you're, you're getting energy back constantly. It's absolutely wild. I love this exotic. Definitely became my new favorite. Hopefully Bungie fixes the resilience bug that warlocks and titans have because it is pretty terrible so as for the build that i currently have so far we'll be looking at the aspects first then the fragments and then if and then after we'll look at the abilities that i'll be using personally so the first one we're using is electrostatic mind uh defeating targets with arc abilities or defeating jolted or blinded targets creates an ionic trace Collecting an ionic trace, trace makes you amplified, which is pretty important. This is definitely going to be really useful because actually, if anything, electrostatic mind is the most important fragment. The other one is kind of like whatever you really feel like using because they're not really that useful for this build. Uh, I personally have arc soul on because I like the arc soul. Cast your rift to create an arc soul that fires it at targets in front of you. Allies can pass through your rift to get an arc soul. Your rift charges faster when allies are near. While amplified, your arc souls are supercharged and gain increased fire rate. So it is cool. Arc soul has always been pretty cool, but the other one is lightning surge. While sliding, activate your charged melee ability to blink forward, calling down lightning strikes that jolt targets as you mater rematerialize. This one's really cool. I really like the melee, but unfortunately, like I said, both of these don't really help with the the building of Ionic Traces, although there could be said that the new melee definitely can, and they definitely can. It's just that the build, the melee I already have, I like already, so I don't know. This one, this one's kind of either or. I'm still going to be using Arc Soul because I like the fact that Arc Soul's always on me and it could be shooting while I'm reloading, so I think that's more useful. But the new melee is definitely good, and I would say not to overlook it. For the fragments themselves, I have Spark of Shock, your arc grenades jolt targets. This one is important because defeating jolted or blinded targets creates an ionic trace. So you're definitely gonna wanna jolt enemies as much as you can. For the second one, we have Spark of Discharge. Arc weapon final blows have a chance to create an ionic trace. This one's just in case I can proc it. I mean, more ionic traces is always good. Uh, for the spark of resistance, we have while surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage. So again, hopefully Bungie fixes the the resilience bug that that the warlocks and titans have because this is going to be really really useful. Because with this build, you're going to be uber aggressive. You're going to be super aggressive. And for the last one, we have sparks of vaults. Finishers make you amplified. I always want to be amplified because your movement speed and weapon handling are greatly increased. After sprinting for a short time, your movement speed is further increased. Rapidly defeating targets with arc damage makes you amplified. So I really like amplified because it makes me go fast because obviously you want to be fast. You want to be super hyper aggressive and me being amplified is just going to help with that. For the actual abilities themselves, for the grenade, I have Arc Bolt Grenade because a grenade that chains bolts of lightning to nearby enemies. This one is not so powerful that it'll kill everything outright, 
but it's enough to jolt enemies, which is what I want. I don't want anything too crazy. Uh, for other grenade options, you can definitely use like skip grenades. Skip grenades would be really good because they don't outright kill enemies as well. But I would stay away from like the flux grenade, the lightning grenade, uh, storm grenade, flashbang grenades could kill stuff outright. So I would be careful with that one. And then pulse grenade, definitely stay away. Again, for this build, the, the grenades I just told you are really good for pretty much everything. It's just that for me, arc bolt grenade, I'm going to be using specifically to jolt enemies so that way I can get more ionic traces. For the melee, I have bolt lightning just because I really like the fact that I can aim it and pretty much hit people. And while amplified ball lightning releases additional lightning strikes before detonating, which I really like. Although chain lightning is also pretty good, an extended range melee that jolts your targets and chains lightning to nearby enemies. While amplified, it creates an additional set of ch chains. So I probably would say chain lightning is the better choice just because you do jolt your enemies with it. It's just that for me, I like ball lightning just because I'm dumb. And then for the other two, it's really your choice. You can use burst glide, uh, balance glide or strafe glide. I use burst glide just because I want to be fast. And then healing rift I use just because of the, the resilience buff, but that's pretty much it for the build. Let me know what you guys think. Obviously, this is just like a baby build. I made this like not even thinking there's obviously better builds out there. So let me know what you guys are going to be running with this. As for the fashion, because I know a lot of people are here just for the fashion itself, and I can't even blame you because this actually looks fucking wild. So Fallen Sunstar looks absolutely fucking wild. The spikes on the helmet make this look so menacing, bro. Like, not only that, the mask, I also really like the mask. It looks really cool, very ornamental, and I like the fact that there's lightning going across each of the spikes. I think that's super metal as fuck. The situation that I'm going to be kind of like laughing about kind of is the fact that this shader is pretty terribly. And when I say terribly, I don't mean like, oh, my God, it's the worst ever. Not necessarily. It's just that it takes shaders really weird. So as you guys can see from Echoed Anger, it actually takes the the like uh, almost blue steel color of it. And that's not bad. It's just that usually the red is the main focus of the color even for abyssinian gold you can see this really dark black almost like a chrome black which i i rarely see for this for this color and then for sato tribe i think this is the norm most normal one but even then this is a different tint of blue than regular uh sato tribe uh armor shaders so this is where it gets weird because for my first example set i ended up going with a kind of like a bougie look because the ornament in the helmet I really wanted to do a bougie look for it first and then we'll go for a more brutal look later for the helmet obviously we're using the exotic but for the shader we're using golden trace now if you guys see golden trace right now it has no white in it which means this takes off colors and I mean off off colors because I didn't even know the golden trace had a white in it so be careful because this shader will take off colors and i'm talking like the the negative off colors like the ones you didn't even know existed because i didn't know this existed even even shaders that like i know the off colors off of i didn't know that like for example i think it, it's a. Uh, so as you guys can see this is the Burguzian knight off color supposedly because actually the off color is this right here. It's a lot more brighter, a lot more chippy. And for the helmet, it's actually a lot lighter. If anything, the Guzian Knight's off color on the helmet actually pulsating lighter and I've darker as I'm fucking saying this. Knight. And I know Burguzian Knight. Burguzian Knight's like one of the shaders that I heavily used back in the day, even like a lot of like last year as well, because I really love this shader. I have never seen this color on Burguzian Knight, and I've used this shader a lot. So I'm just going to let you guys know. Be careful what shaders you put on this because it's going to look weird. It's going to look mad fucking weird because this isn't terrible. Like, again, for Echoed Anger, this isn't terrible because you can make it work. Most of the armor pieces that use uh, Echoed Anger will take that color specifically. I'm just letting you guys know that it shaders really weird. Like, as you guys can see, it takes the armor pieces very well. So for this specific uh, shader, it's not that bad. It's actually pretty good. 
But then you get to like Abyssinian gold and you can see the, the difference, the stark difference of this is just dark as hell. And I, I'm, ta I'm talking like a really good dark black for the chest piece. It's also taking that off colors. So that's why I say it does take off colors, but then it kind of like amplifies that off color a lot. So just be aware of that. Back to the example set. I really like this set because I wanted to go for a bougie look, which is the whole reason why I went with this look. And I know I've used this set before specifically on some other bougie looks, but this is the bougie set that I go for when I want to look if I want to see a piece looks good, like all kitted out like this. So for the arms, we're using the Grand Luster arms because I like the fact that one side actually has a band of gold, the left side specifically, and the other side doesn't because then I, I weighed out with the Vernal Growth Bond, which has gold on one side. And if you use the Melchizedek brand, that shader right there that, that has that dumb name, then you can actually color the band purple so that way it, can, it only looks like the gold is there. For the chest piece, we're using the Robes of Optimacy because, I mean, that's one of the best ones to go bougie with. And I like the fact that it has like this like thing on the back of the neck that like almost like a crown thing. I don't remember how it's called, but that I think that looks really good with it. And then for the boots, we're using the candescent boots because I really like them. They look really good. Like that's really it. That's the only reason why I'm using them. So this is probably one of my favorite looks for it so far. I do like the other set that I made because it's a lot more brutal looking. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. The last set we're going to be looking at is my more brutal look. So for the shader, we're using the Scarlet Semblance. This is the shader that came this season from Crucible. Definitely highly recommend you pick this up if you haven't gotten it yet, because it gives off this really cool, like bloody look, which is very, very good. You guys might, might, must have seen it by now. It's going through Instagram, Twitter. It's going through everywhere because the shader is really good. Uh, so let me explain why I'm using the Lycan robes. So you might have noticed this if you are actually paying attention, but the reason I'm using the lichen robes and the uh, Ciceratops bond is because they're both spiky. I'm trying to give off the fact that I'm using spiky bits in this whole set. And if you guys don't know, the lichen robes have spiky bits at the back. You might, hopefully you've seen it already, but it does have spiky bits in the back and the, and the Cicer Cicer Ciceratops bond has spikes as well. The only reason I didn't want the contender gloves or these or the boots to have uh, spiky bits is because a the spiky pieces that I did find were actually white and I didn't want to fuck up the feng shui of like black and red because there is white in this set, but it's only on the neck and on the groin. That's really it. So I didn't want to add more to it because specifically it was plate armor and I just thought it looked weird and I think the contender gloves do a fine job because again the main focal point is not my arms or the boots it's the helmet and the bond essentially and even the chest piece to a certain point because I want more spiky bits in there so that's pretty much it definitely one of my favorite looks that I've made I might rock this one or the other one or I might just make a new look because I do have to make a video for the new exotics because i do like to make specific exotic videos like like this one for example so let me know what you guys think in the comments below are you guys going to be using uh this exotic let me know i it's definitely a lot of fun i do recommend it but just be aware that the the resilience bug is still out unless it's not then i'll probably post it in the comments below but yeah be safe and i'll see you guys later